Welcome back to Cepheus Protocol, folks. Today's video is going to be a little bit different because we finished our Armored Core playthrough. We won and actually killed every single zombie. That's the first time I've tried that. Normally there are zombies that have fallen through the ground or something, stuck in buildings, whatever, that you can't kill. But we actually got to zero zombies left, zero infected left in this playthrough. So that was pretty cool. Now... I want to go over uh, how the Armored Core was to play because we did an evaluation of the mobile infantry uh, when we finished that. Now we finished the Armored Core, so I think it's appropriate to go in and take a look at how did the Armored Core uh, feel to play. But before we jump into that, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has supported uh, the channel, who subscribes, who likes the videos, who leaves comments. It's so much appreciated. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. And uh, I love you guys. You guys are awesome. So thank you very much for that. And if you're not subscribed, why not go down and hit that subscribe button now. Uh, hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are coming out. And also, of course, like the video. All right, let's jump into the Armored Core. So we have our doctrines up and listed here, and that's what I mainly want to fo focus on. I, I want to to look at the, the different abilities that we get as the Armored Core, and we will take them uh, one by one uh, so that we see what it's like. Uh, now, starting out with the cheapest one, it's the Cerberus, which is a tank that you can put a big, uh, what is it, 105 millimeter gun on, I think, or you can have the regular gun that also comes uh, with the other vehicle, which I can't remember the name of right now. Um, or you can put a mortar on. Now, the mortar is not great. Uh, you have to deploy the vehicle. You ha have to make the vehicle stationary for the mortar to be able to shoot. So I think that's kind of, that kind of defeats the purpose of the Cerberus. The, the big gun, the, the 105, I think it is, is okay. It does a lot of damage when it fires. Unfortunately, it fires even at a single infected coming running at you. It'll fire that big uh, cannon shell at it and, and waste its ammo on that. And that is unfortunate. I wish there was a way that you could tell just the Cerberus, uh, well, any vehicle really, not to target infected, but target only buildings. Because targeting infected with with the the 105 is just a waste of ammo and you can't carry a whole lot of ammo with the Cerberus when it, you have the 105 on it so uh, I'm not a big fan of the Cerberus to be honest uh, I don't think it's a great vehicle I think at least for as long as there are the pathfinding issues with the vehicles I would I, I simply stay away from 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 ground-based uh, vehicles because they are so bad at finding their way around they get stuck all the time um, yeah I I'm just not a fan of, of the Cerberus it's it, it's not good it's not good uh, then we have the Charon and the Charon is a helicopter that can carry I think it's 12 people uh, into battle so you can uh, fire from the Charon while it's in the air. You can uh, fast rope down from it. It's a it's a very very useful uh, helicopter. You can quickly move your squads around the map uh, to hotspots, and it's it's really quite useful in in my opinion, uh, especially for a quick response force. You can have them loaded up in the Charon, ready to go if a worm or, a, or something shows up, you can quickly get them over there to, 
to mop up the, the little guys that the worms spawn. Now, for killing the actual worm, I would not use a squad of soldiers, uh, but we'll get back to that later. Uh, then we have the Merlin, which is a big chopper. It can carry, it's around 30 people it can carry, I think. And it can also carry vehicles, which is incredibly useful. We didn't use it much in the playthrough. We actually didn't use it at all in the playthrough. I just bought it at the end of the playthrough to see what it looked like. Uh, but given that it can carry vehicles, uh, like the uh, capture trucks, that is very, very useful because you can basically you can blow up all the bridges uh, between the islands and still be able to get capture trucks between them. So that is incredibly useful in my opinion. And but you would need a few uh, Merlins for it to be e efficient. So so that's a downside to blowing up all the bridges. But blowing up all the bridges uh, to to each island. Uh, is a, a big uh, safety measure, right? Just blow up everything and no infected will get over to the other island, except of course for the worm that will just show up where it damn pleases. Then we have the white phosphorus, which we didn't use either in the, in the playthrough. It's basically a, an airstrike only with white phosphorus and it's not it's not a, a hit and run thing so you just bomb it and then it's over the white phosphorus actually stays in the air and burns for quite a while uh, so it could be useful for an area of approach that the infected are taken a lot you could uh, lay down some white phosphorus in that area and just uh, have the have the infected run through the white phosphorus and, and burn to death, which is very useful. So you can kind of uh, kind of block off a path using that. Very very cool stuff. Uh, then we have by far the most useful thing in the armored doctrine, and that is the Shawnee. The Shawnee is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Get two, uh, I got three Shawnees and I do recommend three Shawnees because three Shawnees can, can tear through a worm. I mean, three Shawnees with full ammo will take down a worm basically. And that is incredibly useful. You can quickly get them around. They can't carry troops with them, but the firepower that they lay on is just amazing. They are expensive in uh, in slots, so they cost 10 slots per Shawnee, but 30 slots for three Shawnees is well worth it, and you, you just can't go wrong by getting uh, three Shawnees, in my opinion. They take down the worm, then you, they can even take down the, the little guys that the worms drop off, but of course, you can also have a Charon uh, as backup. So get the Shawnees in there, kill the worm, get the your quick response force in there, mop up the uh, the little guys, and done deal. It's amazing. So the Shawnee is absolutely wonderful. I uh, I love the Shawnee. So I think comparing. The mobile infantry and the armored core. I prefer the mobile infantry. Uh, as it suggests, they're mobile. They you you have the mini gunners. You have the grenade launcher for for your assaults. You have the rocket launcher for your assaults. Though the rocket launcher is meh, uh, but the grenade launcher is fantastic. So. For my play style and for the way I like to play the game, I think the mobile infantry is more me, and I also think it's more if effective than than the armored core. Now, the Shawnee would be nice to have when you play mobile infantry, don't get me wrong, but you can handle worms with the mobile infantry, 
if you have grenade launchers and uh, and some rockets then uh, you, you can actually handle the worms that way so yeah i think the armor core is okay it's not fantastic it will be better when they fix the ground vehicles the cerberus uh, in particular that it can actually uh, find its way through uh, the streets then i think probably the armored core is, is pretty good as well but as long as there are these issues with the vehicle pathfinding i prefer the the mobile infantry at least so yeah, that's my thoughts on the Armored Core. Let me know what you think of the Armored Core, what you think of the Mobile Infantry, which one do you think is more fun and uh, better to play, what, what suits your playstyle better. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why not leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.